Hi, my name is Alejo Rostata, and in this video, I will explain how the Comstart algorithm works. I will also show you how to implement this algorithm in C++. First, let's see what a Comstart is. Comstart is an improved sorting algorithm based on bubble sort developed by Wolodymyr Dobosiewicz and Arthur Borowy in the 1980s. Unlike bubble sort, which works by repeatedly swapping adjacent elements one by one if they are in the wrong order, Come sort works by using a gap. The gap starts with a large value and shrinks by a factor of 1.3 in every itera iteration until it reaches 1. Thus, come sort removes more inversions with one swap and performs better than bubble sort. In addition, bubble sort compares elements one at a time and swap them if needed. While the come sort skip over some element, this speeds things up. To give you more details on how it works and perform better than the bubble sort, imagine you have a bunch of different colored marbles and you want to arrange them from smallest to biggest. Now, this is how bubble sort will work. First, you pick up two marbles and compare them. If the first marble is much larger than the second one, you swap them. Then you move to the next two marbles and do the same thing. You keep doing this until you have compared all the all the marbles and put them in order. The concept is the same but is slightly different. Just like the bubble sort, you pick up two marbles and compare them, but instead of moving to the next two marbles right away, you leave a little space between them. This way you can skip over some marbles you already know are in the right place. You will keep doing this, leaving more and more space between the marbles each time until you compare all the marbles and put them in order. Now, you may wonder, why do we use a factor of 1.3 to shrink the gap? Can we use other values to shrink the gap? Here is the answer. First, 1.3 has been suggested as an ideal shrink factor after empirical testing on over 200,000 random lists. A value too small slows the algorithm down by making many unnecessary comparisons. In contrast, a value too large fails to effectively deal with turtles, requiring many passes with one gap size. And this is why 1.3 is the most efficient and ideal factor to shrink the gap. Let's see how this sorting algorithm works in action. Assuming we have given the task of sorting a list of integers. To simplify this, this explanation, we will only use a limited number of integers. At this point, we only have six integers in unsorted order, which are 5, 1, 6, 4, 2, and 3. Now, to find our first gap, the formula is n divided by our shrink factor 1.3 and where n is the number of elements we want to sort. And since our elements are 6, it will be 6 divided by 1.3, and the answer is a round of number of 4. This will now be our first gap. The second thing we do is compare these two and swap them if the value of the first element is greater than the second one. Since 5 is greater than 4, we should swap these two. And then we will move to the next element with the same gap and do the same comparison and swap. Here, since 1 is less than 2, then we don't need to swap them. Again, we'll move to the next element and do the same. This procedure will continue until we reach the last element. In the next step, we'll find the next gap using the same formula. But this time, we will use the previous gap value of 4. So we get our... Uh, 4 divided by 1.3 and the answer is a round of number of 3. This will be our new gap value. Again, we, we will compare these two elements, 4 and 3, and then swap them since 4 is greater than, the, than 3. Then we will continue moving to the next element and repeat the same procedure. Again, in the next step, we'll find the remaining gap using the same formula. This time, it's 3 divided by 1.3 which is a round of number of 2 and our new gap value. The same procedure, compare, compare the two elements, swap them if, ne if needed, and proceed to the next element. And finally, in the next step, 
This time, it's 2 divided by 1.3, which is a round-off number of 1. As you can see at this point, when we finally reach the gap value of 1, we are also done sorting the elements. Now, let's see how to implement the ComSort algorithm in C++. I have here the pseudocode on how to implement it. First, we, we initialize an unsorted array, initialize the gap. Here, we will need to get the size of our array for the gap initialization. And then we create a while group that runs until the gap is greater than 1. And the last iteration causes a swap. Then we find the next gap using shrink factor 1.3 and get the largest possible integer value using the floor function. And we set the gap to 1 if the gap is less than 1 to break the loop. Then we set the variable is swap as false so we can check if the swap happened or not. Here, we create another loop to compare all elements with the current gap. And if the first element is greater than the second element, we swap them. And we simply initialize the variable is swap to true, telling our code that swapping happened. And that's all. We can now print the sorted array if we want to. I will now demonstrate how to implement this concert algorithm in C++. Here at the bottom right, we have our pseudocode as our guide. Okay, first I will write the code and then explain it to you. As you can see in the output, our list of integers is now sorted after running the code. What happened here was that first, we initialized our gap to the same size as our array, which is 6. And then we make a while loop that runs until the gap value is greater than 1, or the variable is swap becomes true. Then we calculate our very first gap to be sorted by dividing it into our shrink factor, which is 1.3. Then using the plor function to run up to the nearest possible integer. Then we make a condition that if the gap value becomes less than 1, then we will initialize it back to 1. We have to do this because after dividing the gap into 1.3, we may be able to produce a result of less than 1. If that happens, we won't be able to break our while loop. This is because we said here, that the loop would continue as long as the gap value is greater than 1. 
And here, our variable is swap is set to false to indicate that swapping has taken place later. And then we create a for loop for the current gap to compare all the elements. And here, we compare the two elements within the gap and tell our code that if the value of the element is greater than the second one, then we simply swap the position of these two using the swap function. Then our variable is swap will be set to true to indicate that the swap was successful. This code will continue to run until we reach the end point where the gap value becomes 1. And after this, we simply print the value of our array using a power loop. And as you can see in the output, it is now sorted integers. Okay, our code is a little too long, but we can actually optimize this by using a lambda. Um, let's try that. Okay, great. This lambda is just the same as the previous one but in a single line of code and much shorter. What happened here is that we simply tell our code that if the value of this computation is less than 1 and is true, then return 1. Otherwise, we return the value of the gap. Same here, if the value of the element is greater than the second one and is true, then we swap the position of these two elements. And we return true or false to indicate if the swap happened or not. Okay, let's try another set of integers before ending this video. As you can see, with the new set of integers and using a lambda to shorten the code, the output is still the same as expected. Our list of integers is now sorted. And that's all. This is how we implement the comsort algorithm in C++. Um, this is where we will end this video. I hope you understand how the comsort algorithm works. Thank you.